Coming your way on Philadelphia 76ers now, some takeaways from the preseason opener against the Brooklyn Nets. First, though, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I'm being told that if you don't hit that red sub button, the Sixers could lose a lot of games this year. So lock us in for the best, most informative Sixers coverage, youtube.com slash 76ers TV. And let's tip off the show. This is Philadelphia 76ers Now. I'm your host, Chase Senior. On the docket for today, takeaways from the 76ers preseason opener against the Nets and the fraud Ben Simmons. Nothing made me happier than to see that turnaround Jay clank right off the backboard. Now, keep in mind, no Joel Embiid in this basketball game. No James Harden. P.J. Tucker didn't play either yet. Philadelphia 76ers still able to come through with the convincing win. And once again, they were led by Philadelphia's son. Tyrese Maxey. Now, Daryl Morey said a couple of weeks ago, we're really relying a lot on Maxey to take yet another big step. Now, he did that from year one to year two. Can he do that once again from year two to year three? Looked as though he's going to have no problems. 20 points, three dimes, six of eight from the floor, two of four from three. Uh, and you know, with, with Tyrese Maxey, really like his ability to break guys down off the dribble, to let it fly from beyond the arc, to really create for himself and others. Mostly, though, I love the confidence that this guy has. Other notable performances for Philadelphia, Furkan Korkmaz with 15 points, four dimes, two of four from three. And then also, how about Montrezl Harrell? He fouled out in like 15 minutes, maybe even less than that, still 10 points, Five boards and three dimes for him. The starting five for Philly against Brooklyn was pretty interesting. And I've said for a little while, the Sixers have a lot more depth this year as compared to years previous. And here was their starting five. Tobias Harris continues to be an Iron Man. It seems as though he really never misses any many games. DeAnthony Melton, I'm so excited to see what he brings to this offense coming in off the bench, but also as a defensive dog. Tyrese Maxey is the primary ball handler. Paul Reed holding it down at that center spot. And everybody keeps talking about Matisse Thibel with that improved three-point stroke. Is it improved? We'll see once the pressure is on. Now, I do think the Sixers has special versatility this year. And we have been able to say that about Philly for a little while because they've been a little bit shorthanded at some positions or a position or with their bench. They've always come up a little bit short in that regard. This year, though, I think Daryl Moore has put together a good squad. Grade the preseason opener for Philadelphia. I want to hear from you in the comment section right now. A, B, C, D, or F. Sound off with what you think and why you go down there. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit us up, youtube.com slash 76ers TV. Going to continue to pump out really good Sixers coverage. And with the season right around the corner, you can expect us to give you more Sixers coverage. I'm the host of Philadelphia Eagles now, 76ers now. They call me Mr. Philadelphia here down in Dallas for our national sports network, the co-workers do. So let's show them what's up. Show them that Philly fans rally by subscribing to the channel. As for the latest on James Harden, he was asked about some of his new opportunities, and I thought what Doc Rivers said on Tuesday was pretty interesting, too. He wants James Harden to basically be a scoring Magic Johnson. It's a little bit more different, Harden said, different because of the time this summer I had to prepare and get my mind and body right, and it's just an opportunity with the new people that we have, and honestly, just the communication with myself and Doc, as well as Joel Embiid, to know when it's time for me to be aggressive and for Joel to be aggressive. And this duo, we talked about it in the first uh, couple of games that they played, that two-man action, the pick and roll, the pick and pop, it looked unstoppable. I mean, I remember that game against the New York Knicks, Harden looked good, and Bede was healthy, that two-man operation was just lethal, and then toward the end of the year, Harden started to struggle a little bit. He continues to blame it on the hamstring injury. I hope it's that and him just not being washed because he has so much mileage on the tires. But you see the potential here. And again, James Harden does not have to be the Houston Rockets James Harden, where he was playing MVP basketball and scoring between 30 and 35 points per game. He doesn't have to be that guy. If he's this guy here to your right with better efficiency from the field in the three, point range, then yeah, that's what you need. And for him to not go away in some of these big games, you know what Embiid's going to bring to the table. Hopefully he can stay healthy. 
runner-up in the MVP race the last two years. He's special. He's one of one. He's unique. He's a unicorn. And I know what we're going to get from him. The X Factor really is James Harden. And prediction time. I do think that Harden and Embiid have the ability to make all NBA teams in their first full season together because you think about it, right? One of the three all NBA teams. If Harden averages nearly a triple double and the Sixers win, let's say 55 to 60 games, and he improves upon his efficiency shooting the basketball, he'll make one of those squads. And you know, Joel Embiid is going to do that as well if he stays healthy. Now, with the Sixers roster, where do you think they are? I know a lot of you like to game, you like to hop on the sticks, play a little NBA 2K, grid the Sixers roster. 1 to 100. Let us know once more down below. Another good deal for the Philly faithful. This Philadelphia 76ers hoodie. You can rep the Sixers or rep your city. It was $70 all on sale. Now for $49. If you head to chatsports.com slash Liberty Bell down here in Dallas, even we still get 90, 80 degree days, but it is starting to get a little bit chillier. I'm about to go back to the Northeast this upcoming weekend for a wedding. I'm going to experience that fall foliage as well as that fall weather and it's hoodie season. Get your hoodie today by using that link down below. As for how Philadelphia can improve, Joel Embiid saying the Sixers need to be a better defensive team than they were last year. And that's pretty interesting because I did think the Sixers were a pretty good defensive team a year ago. But with these offseason acquisitions, they have focused on toughness. They have focused on guys who might be better defensively than the players who occupied those roster spots last year. De'Anthony Melton can defend. Daniel Hells will get up in your grill. P.J. Tucker ain't scared. You know, he's all about that bite. And Montrez Harrell, not the greatest defender, but at least gives you effort on both ends of the floor. And all of these additions were made with defense at the forefront of Daryl Morey's mind. He knew, like Joel Embiid just said, that they needed to get tougher. I think it more comes down to toughness as compared to defensive ability. But if the Sixers do get better defensively, and then they work out some offensive kinks, I think this team can win a lot of basketball games. P.J. Tucker on the defensive mentality, I know what it takes to get it done on a nightly basis in the league and in the playoffs. It's tough, and it comes down a lot of times to communication. When plays break down on defense, you've got to make stuff happen, and it's by communication. You set those expectations right now in the preseason. And with the preseason – you know, we're going to be able to see a really good defensive unit, but in the regular season is when we're really going to get to see what the Sixers team can, uh, team can do defensively. Like, this could be an all-defensive lineup here where guys just straight up get after you. I actually think you can include Tyrese Maxey here because I think he's an above-average defender who could get a little bit better. De'Anthony Melton, Matisse Thybul, Embiid, P.J. Tucker, Daniel House, they ain't scared for a back alley brawl. And Philadelphia, they love that. We love that. All right, who is the most underrated player on the Sixers? That's the last question here that I have for you. Before we hop on out of here, let me know by dropping a name in the comment section and subscribe to the channel. And if you are subscribed, you're alive, and you're a real one. Real one. Roll call. Real one roll call. Appreciate all of you for tuning in and supporting everything that I do, we do here at Chat Sports. Do greatly appreciate all of the support. Comment real one as many times as you can, and we'll catch you next time here on 76ers Now.